aggressive. Um, and if you're going to go to morning fishing, it's very hard to get a storm most mornings, but some mornings have those really hot, humid mornings and you do get a storm. Again, same scenario. Tricky to get that tired. There are certain places though, with, um, not so much of baits, but with lures up over the, um, like a, a high tide, not, not a low tide. So if I'm bait fishing, I always like a low tide and first to low tide. So that's the hour or two. Okay, okay we're going to go bait fishing. I'll tell you that first before I set it up. Um, I have a lot of spots. Um, and I actually do a lot of it off my pontoon, and the pontoon's near me. <laughs> so I run away bays like a really good area, guys, to catch mangrove jacks. And a lot of pontoons, and um, if you have the um, ability to be able to access the area um, without a boat, how many guys don't have a boat actually? Who does that question first? Okay, so a few years too. So bridges are going to be really good, um, jetties are really good. The jetties at the top of the Sandhope Runway Bay is a great spot to fish for jacks. I don't know how secure it is these days, but you need to check that out when you're there, I guess. Um, but it's a great spot to fish. Um, a lot of big jacks there, only those two floating pontoons. Um, that would be probably maybe one of my best spots to fish for jacks at night time, with your lamp ups. Um, but other than that, um, Coon River, uh, there's two that's up there. Uh, yeah. at, um, so Santa Barbara. Santa Barbara, yep. yeah. So up around that area. Yeah, so from the boat ramp to the point, as much as you have close to that house you can. Um, that's a great area to fish there as well for land boats. Um, probably um, Baby Harbour Wall occasionally get up there as well. Yeah. Yeah. It's so, anywhere where there's fast flowing water. They like tidal run, they like current, and it's definitely going to filter more bait past them. They're there to feed, they're there for one thing. So, in the stagnity type back of the canal and things like that, you might get one or two resident fish, but if you've got tidal flow, you're going to definitely have more school in fish. A healthier population. The one thing I've, I've noticed is that if you're going to catch fish on lures, you're catching them in some area of baits. But you won't always catch the fish on lures where you catch them on baits. Oh, sorry. Don't know. Sorry about that, guys. I thought I was blind. <laughs> um, so, what I mean by that is um, a, a lot of areas, if you're land based casting in particular, um, particularly around bridges and you're casting pylons like Monaco Street. Has anyone fished Monaco Street, second bridge at all? It's a great spot. Um, one of my favourite spots too. Um, but you've only got like about a 20 minute window there between the tides that runs about six knots through that under the bridge there. So you park your car in front of the house, just walk down next to the, under the bridge and it's just for half an hour, it's just insane fishing. We use lures there obviously, but you can bait fish there as well. But um, but like the spot I'm talking about where I catch them out of the boat on bait, that's in the Coomer River up near um, Santa Barbara, where Stewie is, um, you will not catch them on lures there. Why well, haven't, so as I was saying. So it depends on where you are, what time of the day, what time of the morning or night, whatever. Nighttime, obviously, land base is better than daytime. It's as simple as that, okay? Um, so I use two types of bait. Um, obviously, it's live bait. Um, so live bait, I'll be using um, easy accessible herrings and silver bitties. Um, mullet's obviously not too bad as well, but I find that silver bitties are probably one of the best. Little diver whiting's also good too. But in two types of bait, it's a bit frozen and, and um, live. So frozen bait, I'll use mullet and I'll use squid. Does anyone use squid for, for um, jacks yet? It is the secret whole gun, squid. whole squid, big squid. It, it would outdo any live bait. You've got to, you've got to trust me on this one and try it. If you haven't tried live uh, whole squid yet, um, give, it a, give it a shot. I'll tell you a little quick story. I was fishing one night near with Drew there. Got a great spot there, <laughs> just up from the boat ramp. And we um, um, were using live Whiting, little diver whiting that is, silver bitties and mullet. And um, well, we got a couple of jacks on, we got one small one. There's a guy over there, I don't know who it was, in another boat. He was maybe 40 metres from us, so it's pitch black. But I could forever hear him yelling and yahooing and they were just using baits as well. And uh, catching a lot of jacks, I think. And then after about two hours, they come back, they come past us, they head back to the boat ramp and he said to me, um, you catching any mate? And I said, oh, we got one and we dropped a couple. And then he's, he says, are you Doug? And I said, yeah. I said, are you Matt? And he's like, yeah. And then, um, so I, I said, he came over closer to me than right next to me. And I said, what were you catching over there, mate? And he said, jacks, just endless amounts of jacks. And I said, okay. And he kept his limit and he's a bit of a grim reaper. He used to be an ex-trout, pro -tra coral trout fisherman. And uh, this guy just smashed it. I mean, they're all 60 centimetre ones. I'm like, holy jeez. Anyhow, 
want to get into is, he said, what bait you use? And I said, live baits. And he said, ah, it's crap. And he said, squid. And I go, no, that's crap. He goes, no, it's good. It's so good. So I said, are you sure? And then he, he had a box of California squid there for about probably six squid still in it. And he said, give it a shot. I'm going home now. So I've got my limit. I've had a great time. Uh, so I threw the squid out. And uh, I kid you not, I still had two liveys out. And I put two squid out. And the liveys even got a, a touch and the squid just sm smashed. We got like four jacks out of six squid. And they're all big. And I just could not believe it. So ever since that day, this is like eight years ago, I guess. But ever since that day, um, I use squid. Squid's the best. Easy to get. You don't, don't have to go and get a cast it, get your net ripped on the bottom around a bridge. Uh, and it just works really well. The un other unusual part too is in the bait is that um, he doesn't use finesse, little sinker, light uh, lead or whatever. He uses six, like a good trout fisherman, six bean sinker, which is like about a size eight ball. Doesn't matter if the current's doing nothing. If it's high tides, just throws that ball out, all right? Um, he uses big hooks, like seven O's. Like, I think they're a little bit big, but seven O's and eight O's, actually. And the, the brown, big brown <laughs> trout fishing ones. Um, and he uses, um, I think it's 55 pound or 70 pound yeah, snide, like seven. really heavy lead. Like, I mean, that's as thick as like most 100 pound mono leaders these days. Old school, but catches the fish and does it over and it's probably the most best grim reaper jack vision that we know of. So try it, <laughs> okay. Um, but I will put a squid on it and I'll rig it up and show you. Stu's so going to do up a um, snell rig here for us now. <coughs> if that's okay, Stu. Yep. And, uh, so I'm just going to run, uh, these are six O's or seven O's, which is the size to use. Thank you, Stuart. So I use octopus style. I don't use these big brown hooks or whatever he uses. Uh, squid, try and get squid that are, I know you can't see it down the back there, sorry guys, but squid that are fairly decent, like, obviously, I don't know, not the big box though, but the bigger the squid, the better. So body that size plus the head. So maybe, uh, you know, well, I'll show you one here. It's nearly similar. Uh, you got the scissors here, buddy. So we'll quickly get the bait stuff out of the way here, then I'll show you how to do it, where to go. So bait fishing's a little bit more uh, aggressive compared to say your finesse of casting lures, right? Still, you need fairly heavy gear for casting lures too. But with the jacks, um, if you've got a TLD25 or something like that, a shark rod, <laughs> they'll take it, right? Um, I personally like that bit of fun, but um, we'll probably just use like sort of 4,000 to 8,000 size spin reels, um, or like your um, sort of uh, probably. I wouldn't use a bait caster, I would probably get ripped out of the boat uh, or off the shoreline. But definitely um, I would be using um, something in like a, a Torium 20 or a Speedmaster 8 or something that smaller boat real size, overhead real size, we've got downstairs. Um, and running about um, braid around minimum 30 pound but probably 50 to 80. So it sounds pretty aggressive but there's a lot of jacks out there, guys, that are well over 60 centimetres. And if you want to see one, it's very hard. I don't think, I think 63 is my biggest I've ever caught on a lure. I know big ones get caught on lures. Um, but I think I've lost 90% of my bigger fish using uh, lures. <laughs> but on baits, I use heavy gear because I want to see the fish. So you get solid fish, you know. So up, up the gear on the bait, I say. Okay, so that's a good size. Actually, that's not a bad size. So, can you all see that? Okay. I'll just um, let him defrost it while Sue's rigging up over there. Any questions so far at all? No, all good. So, um, sinker size, as I said before, it doesn't, they don't really care. They're, they're, they're a fish that don't, when, they're, when you're using lures, you try to think to get it right, to get the action right, it's got to be perfect. But with bait, they're aggressive, they just eat it. Okay, yes, sir. No, no, leave the, on the, on the, no, leave the head on. So the hook goes, I'll show you in a moment how to rig it up, from the bottom to the head, the bottom hook, and the top hook goes through the top hood. Yeah, so it hangs down. So the hooks are snelled. I don't know if it's close to we did it. Yep, perfect, exactly like that, about that far apart. Yep, okay. Based upon the squid. So sinker size, you know, I'd be using a minimum of about a size five or six, sort of thing. Obviously on the high tide, you know, if you want to um, drop your sinker down, 
that, you know, is it more finesse and they're going to hit it harder? They don't care. And, and they feed on the bottom, they're not really feeding up the top. They do smash stuff on the top too, but um, if you're fishing in, say, rock bars or um, uh, places where there's bait down or is low, um, obviously just keep it on the bottom. Because you're using like a, I don't use a swivel at all, so I just run my sinker. This has obviously got a FG or, a, or an Albright, whatever, to my, lit, to my braid, and my sinker's just sitting on there like that. So if they want to take the bait, they'll just pull it through the sinker, right? So they don't feel the resistance anyhow, so same, same. I like a swivel. <laughs> so, but I only do it I only do it because um, then obviously you've got say 400 or 500 and your bait can look a bit more natural. So your sinker's going to be like your anchor, swivel's just going to be like a stopper. You can run a float stopper yeah, if you yeah, want. Yeah, you could do that. And then um, it's just letting it waft a bit more rather than having a big hunk of lead straight on the hook. But yeah. Yeah, so what I'm going to do here is this is a little bit, tiny bit short, but that's all right. We'll just stick it to the top part. But just stick it in here like so. Pull the whole hook out. Stick it between the eyes in that part of the, of the head. Because that's always the first part that gets ripped off, right? It is a tiny bit short. This, sorry, guys. But you want that to go. That's the hardest part of a, of, a, of a squid. If you ever catch a live squid and you use a circle hook, you hook it in that top part right there, right near the top. It's the hardest part of the squid. And one little hook is all you need on a live one, right? It's just a bit short, Stu. I have to come down a bit, sorry guys, but... Is that I, uh, uh, I'll just tie another one. That's no, okay, that's fine, it'll be right. That's right. I'll just pass, it's frozen too, so it's not the best, but we'll give it pass it around. You get, you get the gist. But imagine that hook sitting right at the top of that point of the hood. I can't get there, I can't reach there today, sorry guys. On that one. Sorry about the stink as it goes around too. Um, so, the sink is sitting right above that hook on the bait, okay? Unless you use a swivel, it's still safe. Yeah, mm. yeah. yeah if, you, if you want to run your sinker between your swivel and the hook, it's still got that much to play with. Yeah. If you want to run the sinker above it, I find it still gets tangled up a bit, so it's really got a bit of current. So you run your sinker? I run it above it. Yeah, yeah. just let it flow. Yeah, so yeah. you will get a, get a little bit tangled up occasionally yeah, though. Okay, yeah, yeah. Because it's such a big bait, it gets a lot more um, drag. water flow, drag, yeah. so that's what spins sometimes yeah. or could yeah. get tangled up. You use a little yabby or something, they don't, yeah. they're not as bad, right? Yeah. yeah. You wouldn't use gangs at all, so it's not. No, 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 I tried that, yeah. and I don't know if it puts them off or what it is. Definitely don't use gangs, guys. Look, I will use a two hook rig on mullet okay. fillets, yeah. but I won't use a three. Okay, okay so actually, I'll, I'll rig up a two hook rig too, I've got that here, I think. Um, I hit. It's weird how it works, yeah, I know. And, and don't worry, we try, when we go fishing, as much as we love to just sit there and catch fish, we, we, we have to try different things all the time. And, um, and we learn from, our, from what we do. Guys, um, if you're going to use sink, uh, two, two gang hooks, these little true turns are like killers. So it's true. Good, it's true. Delicate hands. Um, I use about four O's or five O's, so two four O's or two five O's. And I'm using mullet fillet, so this is for mullet fillets. Also, you can use it through um, uh, any other flesh. I'll take Benito. Uh, uh, Slimy fillets are good too. Actually, slime fillets are really good on Jack, so I've got quite a few of those. Thanks, Stuart. So, different scenario with the mullet fillet. So, what I'm doing is I'm going to cut, I normally cut it on an angle across, like about the size of my finger. That's my cut, my piece of bait. Not too big. The problem is you get brim or packet, and you get a lot of brim as bycatch. And then that's one of the big problems with um, where you're fishing for jacks on bait, particularly baits, it bycatches brim and catfish. Down with the, and eels, lots of. Caddies are, yeah, they fight like a jack at the start, some of them, eh? Uh, I've got scissors out, I'll toss. <laughs> Mate, you know everything is, it's fun to be last seminar. Has anyone ever used catfish for bait at all? Besides for crabs, I mean for <laughs> fish. <laughs> yeah, for crabs they're good. No one's ever tried it? No. Sometimes if you're running out of bait, you can get desperate. Just trying to find the curl piece because it gets a bit flat. Where do you get caddies down here? In the Coomera and Rang River. Particularly the Coomera. 
Um, if you want to go catch them, you can catch as many as you like. Nah. <laughs> um, they're up towards, um, yeah, anywhere from sort of Century Cove up, you get a lot more than what you would say. So you get them up, up Coombe Lakes as well. Uh, Logan's full of them as well. Oh, yeah. Mm, heaps up there. So, guys, just, just like that size there, okay? That's all you need, a piece like that. So keep it, like I said, about the size of your finger, whichever finger you want to use. Um, and then just when you put on gang hooks, same deal. Just measure out so you like that squid, that last hook, that should be right on that top of that thing, but I can't reach it there today. But if you put it too far down, like that one there, what will happen is that bait will spin in the water. But if you put the hook right at the tip of the point, uh, at, the, at the top of the helmet, that's where um, it won't spin. And same with gang hooks, same deal. So just try and keep it, um, like the hook's right at the top there, if you can see that. Thanks, mate. Sorry, Stuart. Thank you, mate. This basic, it's very basic, but um, that's it. So leader, uh, like I was saying, uh, uh, like the minimum I'd use that'd be 30 pound on, when I'm bait fishing, but 40, 50 to go. Um, length of leader, metre, around about. They will take around the rocks. Those big ones are really clever. Uh, whatever they can find, a bridge pile on or a rock or a ledge, they're, they're there, you know. They know they're water backwards. And, um, but that's the two baits I would prefer to use over live bait. I haven't got a, a yakka but I'll draw it on the thingy. So we've got a live bait, say yakka or, they love yakkas too, guys. How many guys here, here um, Oh, I should say, if you're offshore fishing and you come back in, has anyone ever dropped a yakka down near where their boat is or around a bridge or something like that for jacks at all? Has anyone tried yak yakkas for boat? Did you get any agree? Yeah, yep. yeah, they love it. They love it. That's probably the best live bait of the lot, actually. So, and the yakka can be like a big one like that size, they'll still eat it. They just want to eat it. Or a small one, doesn't matter. Okay. So, with the live bait, I'll just quickly draw one up here. Not a very good one. So that's the that's the yakka, if you can see there, guys. Sorry about that. Um, but I'd put the hook in two places. I always put the that snell to get like that um, squid one that went around before. So what, I don't put the hook through from that side to that side. Never do that. Just go through. Um, if you're looking down on top of him, that's his head there, that's his tail there, and his spine's down the middle here, down the middle of my finger. Go into nearly the width of the spine, not quite to the spine, under this little uh, little fin here. Just around that area there. And um, go through, put the hook through, and then pull the hook back out. So it actually hasn't gone through past his spine, and it's hanging out exposed. So. The hook will look like, um, that's the eye there, and the shank will go in here. Then internal, that'll be internal, and then that part there will be sticking out like that. So if you're looking down on top of it, it's his tail sort of thing, and that's his spine there, and that's his eyes. The hook's sort of sticking out here, okay, with the eye on it. And then, a bit more of an angle, sorry. And it'll come through like this and stick out oh, like that, sorry, wrong way. Like that, does that make sense? So you don't go as far as your spine, you just go through that part. And then the next hook here, there's multiple ways you can do it. It depends on current, depends on the model of the fish, like a herring, they're gonna die really quick. So you can't really have the luxury of um, pinning both the, both the nose and mouth. The only time you ever do that is if you've got a really good hot bite and you know it's going to hit the water and it's going to be hit straight away as soon as you throw it out because they're going to die pretty quick. They can't open their mouth as very good and on the, on the, if they're locked in. But if that sort of a scenario, your hook's going to come in under the bottom jaw here and come out and stick out here sort of thing, okay? Like so. If they can breathe though, or if, the, if it's going to be a long bite in between, it's not really happening. Um, I'd change that scenario and I'd stick it probably 
in here and it'll come through his head and stick out the other side here, like, like so. Through his nose. Yeah, through his nose, yeah. Um, or the other way is you actually look in the same similar style, but you actually, um, what's the, the shank of the hook here, and internal, you come in, the, in his mouth and then stick it out, out the top here sort of thing, if that makes sense. So it'll look like that, same thing again, but not through the side. Does that make sense? So that's the three ways you put your front hook. With your line, guys, you've got to make sure it's got a little bit of looseness to it. Oh, sorry, wrong way. A little bit of looseness to it down to that hook there. Okay, so you don't want it to be... Um, actually, that's actually... Um, you don't want it to be restricted. Yeah, that's actually snails on here, sorry. So you don't want it to be yeah, restricted. Like Stu said, the fish wants to swim like that and it's curled up and can't do it. It's going to die really quick. And, and you all know how hard it is to get live baits. So um, let, make sure you're always slack there. Not like we had the squid. <laughs> um, any questions on that at all? Does that make sense? Okay. Uh, and then um, the other thing you can do, if you're using, and you've got, so you've got some little hooks in your bags there, they're a little a circle hook. So if, if the fish are on the bite, and there's not much current, you're fishing a back eddy or back block where there's jacks feeding on bait on the surface. Um, if you've got a little herring, silver bitty or whiting, just pin it in the top of the mouth and out. But, uh, not that one, the other one, mate. That one's actually a good bait hook. Um, the little circle. So a little circle, just pin it here, out, and um, use no sinker at all. And the complete opposite to what Al does, <laughs> but using live baits now, that's a bit different. And when they're feeding on the surface, you just pitch out that herring or whatever and leave your bail arm open if you're using a, um, a spin reel and let him take it out and just go. And they'll just flick off 100 miles an hour when they hit, of course. The trouble with uh, jacks is if you've ever either been free spill on a, on a say, a spin reel, I mean, sorry, a bait caster, or a spin reel is flicking out, quite, it's quite aggressive to click that bail arm over. It's not very good for your reel actually doing that, but you can't do much about it. But It'll happen to you. Has anyone had, had that happen yet where they've just hit you straight away? No? You guys do much fishing at all? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, just joking. <laughs> Anyhow, it does happen. You'll see what I mean. It's very quick. It's quite hard to get that bar. You're trying to get it over. It doesn't go over properly. Sorry. Sorry, you were yes. saying before that when you're using live bait, you use like, uh, like no, no or next to no weight? Only if you're in that particular where you're fishing a, a like I say, end of a canal system or um, an eddy where there's not much current in the eddy, or so low to high tide. Um, only not for my dead bait, so this is looking for live baits now. We, we yep. probably only really use weight for live eddies if there is live in the current. Yeah, that's correct. Uh, yeah, then you've got to use uh, weight. Yeah. Yeah. Just run straight from, and, straight from the mainline. Yeah, and the reason why being is you have to do that way because they'll spin otherwise in yes. the current. Yeah. You've got to stop that. You've got to eliminate spinning. Snakes, so yeah. So for any fish, and if you have the luxury of being able to see it sometimes, and see a load in the water and maybe see a fish come up to it. If it's spinning, it, they just don't know about it. I look at it and they'll just swim away. Yeah. If it's sitting there and they're anchored to the bottom but they're actually just swimming in the current, they'll get nailed. Yes. Yeah, so it's better to have more weight than not enough weight. But yeah. in the stage of the tide that like we're talking about, yes. you take the luxury of using no sinker. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, and but when you... When off, no. Oh, that's right, it's a great feel. But the only problem is we'll, we're all anxious and we're all trying to get our line out to the bridge pile out there. And it's very easy to cast your bait off. When well, you've got a sinker, the sinker pulls the line out. When you've got no sinker, it's the bait that pulls the line out. So you, you tend to get a bit more oomph and it rips the bait off. Then you've got three, three live baits down too. You know. Anyhow, um, so yeah, I'll go back to go over what we just did. So definitely squid number one, mullerfilts number two, dead silver bitties, uh, diver whiting, and um, I can use pilchers like. I've caught on filters too, by the way, and filters aren't too bad. I like to use the head section more than the back section for some reason. It works better on them. Uh, half, half a pill is better than a whole pilly. And, uh, and that hook you got in there, which is a, in a box, you'll see a 4-0 uh, bait hole hook. It's really good for that. It's also not a too bad hook to use singly with the mullet fills as well. Okay? And actually, when you put the mullet fill it through, pull the mullet fill up over the eye of the hook. It's got barbs on the back of those, those hooks. And uh, they're made by BKK. They're a really good hook and pull the barb, uh, the bait up over the eye of the hook so it becomes like just a strip hanging there. It's not squashed up 
Okay? Again, if it's long, it doesn't twist as bad as a crushed up, squashed up bait. Bait presentation is really important in any fishing. Um, and then live baits, we've just discussed how to do that. Um, you know, do you cast your live bait out or your baits out? Yeah, I do. I like to keep my lines, when I'm fishing for jacks, so I've got three lines out, so I like to keep them all separated away from each other because they have a tendency to zip all over the joint. Okay. So you look at the structural holes in the middle of the river. Yes, yeah, so I definitely. Um, I'll cover this really quickly. Um, I'm looking for, like, you know when you see, like, current lines in the in a river, that's obviously a rock bar or a, or a drop down or whatever it might be, and that's what you've got to look for. So, um, say you've got a river like this, and there's a, another uh, canal or whatever river here, and there might be a natural event, might be around like that. So, um, you might actually get a bit of a back eddy in here, and there might be a fair bit of bait in there. And the ideal scenario is to uh, either fish just out from that and cast into that area on the running tide, the tide's going this way. Um, but if you can find somewhere like that and it's got like a, on your sounder, over here, and the bottom comes along and then it sort of drops down like that, well that's where that, that'll be swirling here if that, if that rock, if that uh, ledge is there. It'll be swirling up the side of it. And you want to position the boat probably around here somewhere and cast your lines in that one. You might do a long cast down there and short one. I only run my lines fairly short if, I, if I'm on that position where I can drop my lines in this area here, you know. Um, it'll be like you'll drop your line out, it'll, the current will get it, then it'll just fall because there's obviously not much current that actually gets the upwelling. Yep. So it's not too bad to fish. It's quite easy and, and you're very easy to uh, get your bites, but if you're running in just a hard current like a bottom like that, might be a bit, a bit of a structure on it. Um, your line's more like that, and that's when you get more tank, uh, more caught in the bottom and stuff like that. Because the current tends to pull your bait around a bit on the current, on the bottom, rocks. Rocks are, are a really good thing for jacks. Probably number one, and probably timber's number two. If you fish in the creeks and they're up north or whatever, um, like we go barrowfish, we get a lot of jacks, um, but they obviously like trees and structure. But down here it's man-made 90% of the time. So rocks, Seaway Wall's a great spot. Stu does a lot of uh, live baiting in the seaway. Yep. What, what bait is in there, mate? Just live is mainly, yeah. So you get so many, oh, I go offshore and get yakas yeah, or use yeah. pike or something like that. Mm. Bigger live baits in the seaway are better because there's so many broom. You've got to get through for all of those picker stuff, but yeah. It's the same at the river. Yeah. Uh, and has anyone fished the seaway at all? It's very good for jacks, but particularly around now, actually. Oh, I've been late in the season now. too. Yeah, yeah late in the season have a good run there as well. Um, the big jacks there, they're always around that 60 centimetre size. Yeah. What tide would you fish those in the seaway? Mm. I like the run out. Yeah. Last the run out, if I yeah. like. Yeah, like up against the rocks. Yeah, well, I just close. get them the way that I fish for a yeah. dewy. Mm. Like, yeah, same, yeah. same, yeah. yeah. On the Bates ledge. on the bottom, on that ledge, yeah. Mm. Rocks meet the sand, they always school along that edge, and it's kind of there, yeah. Does anyone not know what that is, roughly? Yeah, it's all about that, isn't it? Yeah, uh, no, 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 on the... the on the north wall, mate. Oh, yeah. Okay, yes, yeah. yeah. So as long as it, as the swell's not up and it's not ugly, yeah. um, and not windy, and not blowing from the south because it, it'll wash up on the wall, um, preferably not much wind. And um, yeah, you're fishing in the last sort of 30, 40 metres of the wall, uh, and uh, and you try one drift. There's two ledges there, actually. Yeah, you can try yeah. one and close the one up. You know, drop your line amongst the rocks now again, and uh, and then one out on the on the deeper ledge about probably. 10 or 12 metres out, I guess yeah. it is, off the yeah. wall. Where's it's pretty close. Yeah. I haven't tried down there yeah. yet. Have you done much luck down there at all, Kev? Big ones. Big ones down there, yeah. Big I think they live all the way on the wall there, mate, eh? But they, they tend to be at an end with a hole. There's a hole there, mate, that drops down to about 50 feet, 60 yeah. feet. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Yeah, good. Do you all know where that is? Yep. Cool. Um, so give that a crack, guys. But for those that are land-based, I don't know if you are here tonight, um, I, as I said, try the shopping centre at Renault Bay on the jetties there. Um, low tide, 10 o'clock at night, perfect tide, first the running tide, 11 o'clock. Fantastic. Everyone's gone home. It's quiet. It's hot, hopefully, in summer. Um, definitely Monaco Street, second bridge from the highway, from the surface highway side. Uh, second bridge is my favourite one. There's four bridges on Monaco Street. I've caught them on... 
first one, oh, sorry, the fourth one, which is the one close to Bundle Road. I haven't caught him on the next one, definitely caught him on the second one. And, and Little Tail of Budget Creek. Uh, we fish for jacks there, we, we get your valley and stuff as well as bycatch. So, the good thing about jacks, if you've got bait fishing at night time, you can throw um, a couple of baits out and you can then use poppers or stick baits and try and get a maybe a jack, but definitely a trevally up around Cascade Gardens. There's so anyone fish Cascade Gardens on the bend there? It's a really good spot at night time. Of land based. So, give that a crack. Um, and, uh, and then, uh, look, I'm, I've got a couple of customers that fish um, between Ross Street Bridge and the entrance into Royal Pines there. Um, if you know where that is, along that you can park down to the boat ramp there and just walk along the bank, um, and it gets a bit of rocky up towards the entrance. But I don't want securities like there as well. Um, but definitely, Baby Harbour is a good spot too. But Baby Harbour they kick you off about eight o'clock at night, I think. Yeah, you just don't seem to get jacks on the south side of the tall is there, maybe, of the seaway. It's a great spot because you access it. Yeah. But I just don't know how many jacks been caught off the south side of you. Are there any? No, no, not many. No, no there's heaps. Is there? <laughs> yeah. Serious? Yeah. Oh, land base? Yeah. That was a secret. Yeah. yeah. There you go. That's <laughs> no, not too bad. Not too bad, sir. Not too bad. Yeah. Up near the uh, you, tower? You go near the um, last little walking platform thing out, just on the inside of it, yeah. yeah. Near the tower? East of the tower. Yeah, east of the tower, yeah. 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 Uh, west of the tower? East of the tower. Is it? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's a new walking platform thing. <laughs> yeah, they put like three in. Oh, they're right. Yeah. yeah, okay, there you go. There's actually a hole there um, where the rocks used to be when you used to walk down the seaway wall. There's like four big rocks there used to walk between the rocks. Right opposite that in the seaway, right on the edge there, it drops down about 50 feet really close. Good juice spot too. But um, that might be where you're talking about maybe. A bit further east. Okay. Yeah. All right. Oh, there you go. Okay, um, anyhow, give that a crack. Any, any other places people want to know about or try on land base? Always found some big jacks out Tweed way. Yeah, oh, Tweed's good. Yeah. Actually, my first jack I ever caught when I was about 10 year old, I think it was about 50 something, all those days it was about 20 inches, where it was. Um, 20 inches, yeah, or 22 inches. Um, was off the rock wall there at, is that Chindra? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, that, that area, yeah, yeah. Awesome yeah, yeah. So on a pilchard. Yeah, right, okay. Yeah, it was nuts Mm. Was a fish that was yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah.
and then just walk back down towards the point. You fish off the rock for the point there, and you get a back eddy there, especially on the run-in tide. Run-out tide, it gets smashed by the current, but on the run-in tide, you get a back eddy. Oh, gosh, there's some good jacks in there, too. Yeah, well, I've forgotten about that spot. I probably didn't want to tell you guys that spot, but it's a good spot. <laughs> but it is a really good spot. And um, and I had a few, um, 10 years ago, my mates used to fish all the time and do well. Um, but we don't get the boat there and do the same thing. Yeah. But it's the same place as like Cascade Gardens there. If you're land-based, you can actually cast out um, sick baits and poppers at night time and, uh, and work the Trevally there while you get your jack baits out, you know? Uh, Tally Creek, I fished right up, at, uh, right up to Coplex, yeah, yeah, Coplex there. Um, I mean, I've got little jacks there, mate. No big ones, no big ones. Yeah. Uh, 45 just before this rain, yeah, up, up, up there. Up there, okay, there you go, yeah. Yeah, but I've never seen one of the real big ones there, though, you know? Yeah, you know. Up at, up at Crumber and Tally, they seem to be not the real big ones as you get here. Yeah, the big ones at 17th Avenue on Palm Beach there. Yeah. There's some big ones in the lake there, but. Mm but uh, not in the rivers so much. No. Mm. Okay, any questions on the bait? I'm gonna to go to the lures, because we're a lot talking about lures, we're running out of time, <laughs> so Stewie's up. Well, I'll help you, Stewie. I've got a question, just in yes. terms of strike, mate, have you got any rules of thumb? Oh, uh, yeah, okay, good question, and that's bait. something I want to tell you about. So that's a really good question on, on Dewey's, um, under, not Dewey's, on uh, Jack's. Normally, it's, they don't fumble like broom, it's normally it's like bang, 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 that's it, right? Um, and I fish my rods in the rod holder most of the time, let them hook up themselves. The hard part's getting out of the rod holder. Um, but yeah, I don't normally hold it. I That's watch them. Yeah, get them out of the rod holder. No, no, no you're missing them. Leave, leave yeah, okay. So I set my drags fairly tight, Greg. Fairly tight drag. Mm. So to do that, you got to be running 50 pound braid. Simple as that. Yeah. Otherwise, you'll snap it. Yeah. So set it fairly tight. Use a rod that's got a bit of give in the tip. But, but still using like 50 pound, like a jig rod's really good, soft tip. Um, and let them take it, they'll take it down hard. They'll be pulling on the line and with a softer tip it's easy to get out of the rod holder. With a stiff tip it's very difficult. Um, and like if you get jacked in 50 centimetres, it's very difficult to get, get out of the rod holder. If you're using no, just flat, flush mount rod holders. Um, yeah, but if you want to hold your line, and if I get a bite sometimes I'll grab it and, and try and hook them. But, they tend, I find if I hold it, the bites become more ting, ting, ting. If it's in the rod holder, they bang, bang, whack, you know? So it becomes a different bite. The dead baits. Uh, dead baits, they, they, I find, yeah, dead, liveys I hit it hard. Um, dead baits, they would do a bit of peck, peck, pecking, um, but I think sometimes, sometimes the broom are doing it while they're watching, then they grab it. Yeah, they, Does that make sense? Yeah, they bullies mm. like, will they? They just come and grab it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. So I, I, not in my house, another house. <laughs> There's a lot of um, brim there, and uh, and when we feed them, you see the brim, and then when the jack comes in, that all the brim just go like that. They take off, and the jack just grabs the bait. So you, you sort of think, oh, that's how they obviously do work, you know. So the tink, 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 and this is obviously the brim. And the bang's the jack. Mm. Any other questions? All good? Okay, Stuart, you're up, mate. Mm. So, we're going to talk about Lure casting fish. first to yep. start at the deep end and work our way to the top. If you want. Yep. Yeah. 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 Okay. So, how many of you guys fish with bait casters or. Yeah, so a couple. Spin. Yeah, I just fish spin. I think it's a bit easier. I'm a bit more mm. controlled with the spin rod. But, um, look, I don't fish anything too heavy. I basically just. Sorry, Stu. Fish. Just heavy flatty gear. So like that's an 8 to 15 pound rod. It's a very stiff 8 to 15. And um, I don't do anything too special. I normally fish anywhere from 15 pound to 30 pound braid, depending on what lure and how big the fish are and how they're feeding. And I just fish, um, like on my light setup, I'll fish 15 pound braid with 20 pound leader. So that'll be smaller plastics casting around the pontoons and stuff like that. And then on the heavier combo, something like this one, um, it's about 20 pound braid and 30 or 40 pound leader. So why do you go spin as opposed to bait cast? Bait cast is really good. It's very, very accurate and very short casting. But if you're pontoon fishing and stuff like that, and it's a bit windy and you can't get right in there, you can always work out a bit longer cast with a spin rod. So you can kind of get in there. You can, I can skip cast nicer with a um, spin reel as opposed to a bait cast. It's just personal preference to really get that lure in there. 
But um, I think the biggest thing is you need something quite fast in action. You need it stiff in the tip. A, they've got a really hard mouth. They're all bone, they're all teeth, they're angry. And B, they, the way they hit it, they always come out from the snag where they live in. They hit it on the way back in. They don't hit it on the way out. They come in, do a circle, they eyeball it on the way out and then hit it on the way back in. They know where they want to go and they're going to get there. So you need something stiff just to extract them and try to turn them before they um, mm. get too far. Use that bit of power on the rod, guys, yeah. to pull them out. Yeah. yeah. But, we actually um, need a lot of power. Yeah, you need a lot, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Dougie, you yeah. spin, bait cast? Bit of uh, I use both, actually. Yeah. I, I like using bait cast as well. Um, like I, I like, I used to like little short rods, like five, six from up north, obviously. Everyone used short rods for bar out there. That's how I was brought up. But, um, but now I do use longer rods, the six six. Um, sometimes I use seven foot. Actually, it might be seven foot this one. Sorry, but that's it is seven foot. But that's the sort of length that a lot of guys use. Um, size of the rods sort of ten to twenty pound, or ten to thirty, or fifteen to thirty. So fairly strong. Uh, real size like Karata two hundred or something that that category. That's got a bit of decent drag to it, and um, and running thirty pound braid on a bait caster. Yeah. Uh, I wouldn't run twenty on. Oh, I, would, I do run some twenties, but thirties the go. Um, and then braids another thing too, which braid is, you know, you want braids going to be tough. Um, when you're fishing the sort of 50 and 80 pound, the bait is a little bit different because the, the, the line's strong, right? It's, it's going to do the job. But when you're running like uh, 20 or 30 pound braid, you need something that's got a bit of um, uh, abrasion resistance. It's really important because you haven't got the strength to do what, when it's taken out of the rocks and stuff like that. And there's a couple of braids out now. There's a new one out from Dyra, I passed this around. Um, there, I'll just see the size, size too. Is that the heavy one, mate? No. Oh, no. That one there. So this is, um, I'll just cut a bit off and pass it around, actually. It's uh, P2, which is 35 pounds. So P2 is normally um, very, very thin, so um, like 20 pounds, say. Um, and then every year the braid gets thinner and thinner and thinner and thinner, and we just go, wow, look at this, look at this. But this one's the first one that's in a thin Japanese braid that's 300% more abrasion resistance. So that's the big killer. So the big thing that you want to look for, sorry. So normally suffix 832, that's like that's actually even stronger than fins or power pro in abrasion resistance. And that was the closest we could get to like a Japanese braid. Okay. Um, but it still had the thickness, unfortunately. And then now they've brought out this one. So I'll pass this both around. One's 20 pound. Just want to cut a bit off that one there, buddy. Actually, just hang it at the, yeah, hang just, it at the packet, yeah. yeah. So, it's true. so the biggest thing is you're not really buying line on size now, you're buying it on diameter. So we have customers all the time, they say, oh, well, I want eight pound for flatty fishing. And I'll end up selling them 16 pound because it's thinner than the eight pound that they're gonna look at. So there's no point in going eight. A, they don't really make the Japanese, the good Japanese stuff in that thin, because mm. it's too thin. And B, it's, um, well, when you go a little bit heavier, you've got a bit more security if you do hook something big but so just have a feel of them the suffix as dougie said it's probably one of the most abrasion resistant for a traditional braid and um, it's a good jack braid yeah yeah a little bit ropey good on notch strength then if you were going to go like a japanese like a pe rated braid just go two yeah. two or above mm. yeah anything lower than two you're just not going to have the great abrasion characteristics of something a little bit thicker mm. yeah but you got 20 pound versus 35 there that's going around, but they're the same thickness. Yeah. Um, but anyhow, that's your braid. So um, yeah, as I was saying before, if you're using a bait cast or spin, try and get yourself something that's, as Stuart was saying, that's abrasion resistant. Um, leader, but I'm using lures, I'm fishing 20 to 30 pound. 20 is like, if I'm using plastics and I'm in the area not, that's not too structural, if that makes sense. Um, along the edge of floating pontoons more than pylon pontoons. Um, or if I'm fishing um, a, an area that's just not susceptible, susceptible to um, abrasion areas, um, I'll use 20, but 30 is on my bait caster, 20 on my spin gear. Yep. Yeah. Um, Stu, what size lead are you using, mate? Uh, look, I cast in small plastics along pontoons and stuff. If they're small, like a three inch plastic, I'll just use 20, 16 or 20. Mm. And on the Six, heavier stuff. Yeah. Stu always uses a lot, lot, lot lighter than I do. Yeah. Is a game. <laughs> I don't. I don't want to lose my lures as much. Oh yeah, yeah. go like get more bites. But um, yeah. yeah, and then if it's if they're not too fussy and stuff like that, I'll fish 25 or 30. But mm. it's always fluorocarbon, so it's 
a higher abrasion resistance. So even though it's say 20 pound, it might have the abrasion res uh, characteristics of say a 30 or a 40 pound mono. Mm. It's a lot harder. But um, the only double guys. Yeah. The, the abrasion resistance. Mm. Yeah. Yep. I think the beauty about the Gold Coast, especially, and like a lot of new areas, is up north you look at them when they go jack fishing and it's always on that run in tide and they're always fishing around structure like mangroves and things like that. Whereas the Gold Coast in particular, a great example, you've got floating pontoons and stuff, that structure's always there. You can fish it on a low tide, you can fish it on a high tide, it moves up and down with the water, it's always at the same depth. It's just the depth underneath that varies. So. And there's not too many that'll sit high and dry at low tide. So you can fish it at any stage of the day, any day that you can. There's there's a um, a spot for you. Mm. Yeah. Do you want to start in deep divers, man? Yeah, if you want. Yep. Yeah, so deep diver-wise, I normally troll them. I'm, um, I don't really cast to any deep divers. Dougie, do you cast them? Mm, a little bit. Yeah, a little bit. Next size deal. Yeah, so small stuff like that type of thing, you would cast, more of a jerkbait style. Um, deep diver-wise, like I was saying before, like 100 mil pointers and things like that, they do work quite well as well. You can cast them, um, but trolling this time of year seems to work a little bit better. I always cast the hard body like a jerkbait style and work it really hard and really fast, very aggressive when it gets real hot. So really hot and balmy afternoon, just before a storm, they'll fire up, it gets them angry, and um, that's when they respond better to that jerkbait, real aggressive action. Whereas this time of year, water temp's still cool-ish, it started warming up. There are jacks getting caught, definitely, but they'd respond better to either a slow roll if you are just throwing and winding, um, or just a slow troll. So cover that ground and just kind of slow it all down a bit this time of year. But as it gets hotter, speed it up, fish harder, fish faster. Mm. Yeah. Col colors and Lucky Craft, they do some really good jack colors, like red colors. So jacks love red color, if you don't know that already. Um, orange would be probably number two. And then natural colours like um, silvers or natural bait fish colours like so, all the ones going around. Um, we're coming next. Oh, gold's good too, by the way. And gold's like so. Um, and, but they're expensive. Like even, even with the discount, they're still like 30 bucks or 35 yeah. bucks. They're expensive. But they're good. The good thing about it as well, <laughs> they're, um, they come with good hooks and they come with good rings. You don't have yeah. to upgrade anything. True. So, like ages ago, you'd always read a magazine and, or article or watch a video and I'd always say, the first thing you got to do is upgrade your hooks, upgrade your rings. So effectively, you're turning that $20 cheap lure into a $30 lure anyway. You're putting an extra 10 bucks of hardware on there. Mm. Whereas if you just spend the money at the start, it comes with good hooks, so yeah. They're same price or Pretty much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah that's yeah. right. What steps are they around that? That little one going around, that first one, like the group of two of them, that'll probably dive to about a metre and a half, I'd say, ish. I think it's actually two. Maybe two, yeah. yeah. Depends on your line as well. So if you're fishing that heavier braid, obviously more drag, it's not going to dive as deep. Um, but that bigger one, three metres. Yeah. Yeah. Three metres. Actually, three metres will get down. Yeah, right. Yeah. yeah. And the big one yeah. is, um, is actually two to three metres. Yeah. They do a deep one as well. We've got a deep version yeah. now as well. The bigger one. Yeah. Um, we sell a lot of double clutches for jacks as well. Um, yeah, we do in the big size though. Yeah. That yeah. size. The uh, yep, they're correct. Yep. Yeah. Um, the thing is, the hardware nose is good for 20 pound, but not good for 30. You'll straighten yeah. the hooks. Yeah. Okay. Um, but they're a great lure. Ah, uh, yeah. If you're going to use like 30 pound braid, 100%. Uh, uh, yeah, BMCs, BKKs, they're all good. Yeah. Um, don't get too heavy though. Yeah, the problem is if you upgrade your like a really good Japanese lure, they're designed, they come out yeah. with those hooks for a reason. Yeah, yeah. They swim in the tank, they know how it swims, yeah. it suspends yeah. when it's supposed yeah. to suspend. Yeah, that's right, you mm. put a bigger hook mm. on it, it's heavy, it's going to start sinking. Yeah. Might not swim as good, yeah. yeah, might not have that tight shimmy that it had. Yeah, but some of the duo stuff coming out now is really good as well. Like that is more of a traditional trolling type lure, like that shape. Um, you can cast it and slowly retrieve it in, jerk it a bit as well if you want, but they just come with good hooks. So, I mean, that's going to be a really good one for trolling that deeper rock bar and stuff like that. Mm. Edges of pontoons, edges of marinas, all that stuff. Yeah. Yeah, for trolling, um, like years ago, we weren't, say, go back about 10, 15 years ago, um, we weren't really uh, had the luxury of all these lures now, as we did. And, and these haven't changed. I used to use these 
15, 20 years ago, that, when, they, when they first came out, um, there were a pile of extra wraps, but in the, I think it's the 12, that one, or 11, the size back then was 10 or 15, but, um, but just a great trolling lure, and they still are, they're still really good. Um, trolling lures, yeah, try and keep it around the size, these ones come around, all that first Lucky Craft, the bigger one. Um, and when you're trolling for jacks, I oh, will talk about trolling a bit later actually. You keep going deep yeah. dive, I'll take my yeah, thunder so, a bit. Sorry, that's all right, mate. Sorry, but yeah. um yeah, so any of that stuff going around. There's a couple Jester's of others. I tool. really like jesters, yeah. They're a bit mm. of a hybrid one between like a pointer and a squirrel. Um I just like anything with a bit of shine to a bit of flash. Mm. If you think about ninety-nine times out of a hundred where a jack would be caught, like so it's gonna be generally in canals and stuff like that, or around a marina or hard structure, generally the water's pretty dirty or it is discoloured. Very rarely is it that gin clear and beautiful water. So you want something that flashes and they can see it. The other big thing is rattle. So they like that real harsh. Yeah. Try to get it, when you're buying something with a rattle, try to get that like deep thud, like a drone, um, rather than like a real tinny rattle. Yeah, tinny rattles work, they've got their time and place, but not as good as something deep. Deep, deep rattle is more natural rattle. What colours are not? doesn't really matter too much, but I think as long as it's something with a bit of a silhouette. Like I wouldn't use a transparent lure at night. Yeah, yeah. But if you're fishing around bridge lights and stuff like that, something that's a bit shiny, it's gonna obviously still flash. Silhouette. Yeah. Yeah, the other thing casting guys, the next side of the deep divers, then you go to sort of ones that are slow rising or slow sinking. So um, the ones that are slow rising are a little bit deeper, which is this style here. So like a little herring. They'll get down still about two metres, but when you um, twitch switch and you stop, it won't sort of pop back up. It'll actually be really, really slow. Okay. And then you can pull it down a bit deeper again, right? Um, which is that style there. And then you have slow sinking, which is the opposite. So you cast it out and you've got to count it down. How, you've got to know before you cast out how fast it sinks, the sink rate. So you got to act just at daytime, just chuck it in the pool or chuck it out, in, out wherever and see how fast it sinks down. And that'll give you some idea, particularly if you're casting over structure. Like if you're fishing up at um, Bond Union or something where there's all that wire crap on the bottom, you got to know when your lure's going to be at the yeah. bottom before you pull it. So, <laughs> otherwise you'll get done on the bottom. So um, these are, they call them, actually they're called countdown because that's the idea of it. And when you're at the desired depth and then you work it, um, there's a whole range of different lures, like we've got thousands of lures down there, but they're, they're the sort of most popular ones we pass around, the most popular ones we sell, the jacks. Um, anything else for that, those two? No, that's about it. Like obviously that's that style and then you go into like your shallower running jerk baits and stuff mm. like that. So the biggest thing is, you've got to think about, as Dougie said before, it's the lure for the job. So you wouldn't use that count, like the sinking one with real harsh bottom, because it's going to sink there, you're going to get more snags. Good for us, bad for you. It's just one of those things. But um, use them everywhere, they're really good. Nah. But um, you gotta think there's no point in using a really shallow running lure against something like a pontoon. Because the fish are generally nine times out of ten, they're under that pontoon and they're waiting for something to swim past. They're using it as cover. You need your lure to swim at least the depth of the pontoon, if not underneath. So you might have a really nice little shallow runner that only dives to say 200 mil or 300 mil, but in, on a pontoon that sits down 500 mil, they ain't gonna see it. Mm. It's as simple as that. You might get the odd trevally or brim or something that's swimming past the outside that sees it, but the jacket's under there for cover. It's using it as an ambush point. It needs to swim under that so it'd be able to see it go past. So that's as well, like when we get into plastics and stuff like that, with jig head weight, we fish them fairly fast, so you use quite a big heavy. heavy weight so it does swim under that pontoon it's tracking deeper but um yeah i think as long as you're figuring that out uh, like obviously we catch jacks in quite shallow water as well like around drains and stuff like that and are along rock bars and like rock walls and they're right up in the shallow stuff it's a perfect spot for a surface lure like it's something there's structure on the bottom the fish are obviously closer to the bottom because there's not much above them water wise and they're going to see that. Their eyes are always facing upwards, so, yeah. Yeah, so when, you, when you're casting, guys, if you're in a boat, um, or if you're from the shoreline on a jetty or whatever, um, always cast up into the current 
and wind it back with the current. Doesn't you have to wind a bit faster? That's true. He's saying to get to work, but they're facing into the current all the time. So they're actually the jacks have a good habit of actually spinning around all the time. They they follow. They turn around and follow it again. If that makes sense. You see them sometimes. And um, if you have um, if you're casting um, against the current, that makes sense. Your lure's got to be working a lot harder because it's actually you've already got two knots of current, and you want them to really work at about one knot or one and a half knots. So most lures work best if you ever troll them, whatever, about two to four k's an hour. So four's about our limit mm. at the most. Um, and so you've got to sort of get that happy action where the lure's most natural. So casting against the current um, is not the best way to do it because it's, it's working double over time. Okay, not looking as good as it should. That's about as small as I'd a cast probably on an East Street. Yeah, yeah, I wouldn't cast them. Those little shad enough. wraps are really good, guys. Yeah. Um, so oh, maybe that'd be the most smallest. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So, is there any questions on the hard body scene so far? Yep. Just one thing, do you have any more hands laws and stuff, though? Oh, I wish. Yeah, I know, you do, I remember. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, um, I've got a couple of grey ghosts in yeah. the 12 wolf bait. Yeah, I've got yeah. a few, I think, four of them on camera yeah. a couple of weeks ago. Yeah. There's now a copy out. Yeah. There's two copies, actually. Yeah. Um, did we get Josh's one in? Yeah. No, not yet. Not yet. They're no. just coming. There's yeah. another one we've got down, it's a man's 10 stretch oh, okay. copy. Yeah. And then um, Samaki's bringing out one that's very similar yeah. as well. Okay. I've always found the 10s are good for flatty in that. Very good. Um, yep. I found that the 20s, the, or the book plates, when they started coming out, for were jacks. all for jacks. Yeah. Even so, sometimes the 25s. Uh, so, yeah, that's right. So the lure you've got in the bag today is like a sort of a wolf bait size. Yeah. Um, really good for casting and trolling. Yeah. Um, but, uh, yeah, uh, we just obviously can't get them anymore. Yeah. So uh, they're, uh, they're, and they're expensive online too. Yeah. Uh, second hand, you know? Yeah. Yeah. They're, yeah. They're collecting items. Yeah, that's... <laughs> Uh, years ago, stretch men stretched ten plus. Uh, 20, sorry, buff baits was a twelve plus, and and the twenty plus, so about that size, a deep diver. Um, the amount we used to sell for jacks is ridiculous. But those days, you only had Rapala and, and mans. That was about it. You had to choose from. Um, surface was poppers and that too. Yeah, so poppers and stick baits. I'm more of a stick bait person than a popper. Uh, I think you can cover a little bit more ground, a bit quicker. Just walk it. Um, so it's a slow wind and a twitch of the rod and you should be able to get that stick bait to kind of walk to one side and walk to the other. It's called walking the dog. But um, anything like that's kind of snub nose, walks a lot nicer, like that Rapala type thing is really good. I'll pass that around. Um, that's a new one, but it's going to walk pretty easy just because it's kind of that banana type shape. Um, the other one that's probably our biggest seller is just a splash prawn. So MMD, 95 mil. Pretty easy to use, kind of a bit of a popper, walker, hybrid type thing. Um, but they work really good and heaps of jacks get caught on them. So it's probably our biggest sell in jack mm. surface lure. Mm. Yep. Color wise, does it matter? They're looking at it from underneath anyway. How much can they see? Everyone's got their own favorite, but I like something with a bit of body to it. Especially if you're going to fish like into the dark, you've got a bit of full moon and you could, they're kind of looking up and it throws that silhouette. Yeah. I've had some of my best surface fishing of a night on that full moon period, so it's really good, yeah. Works quite well. Yeah, I, I've done really well on um, poppers for jacks in the daytime, early morning, first light, um, high tide, and the best spots to fish, you probably, some of you might already fish there, but um, pretty well nearly all the way around um, Sovereign is really good, particularly on the east side, and, uh, and definitely down at Kurang Cove, um, at the entrance to Kurang Cove and the walls into Kurang Cove along those retaining walls are really good on the high tide. You want high tide about five in the morning this time of year, which is tomorrow morning. Okay. <laughs> so, but that's seriously, if, has anyone ever tried for jacks or poppers early morning at all? Any luck at all, Greg? Yep. Uh, not really on the poppers. Yep. Or we'll stick baits? Not any uh, poppers? No. Uh, no, okay. How about you, matey? Got one. Got one, yeah, okay. Yeah, so the secret to early morning is because it's so early and no boat's gone past and it's natural. So you, you've got to look, and all fishing, you've got to look and try and learn, right? And so you drive along the wall, along the walls and look for any splashing up on the wall. That's the secret. No boats have gone past, so they're not waves that are splashed up on the wall. When you see splashing up on the wall, it's a jack's 
smack something and there'll be a jack in that vicinity and cast the crap out of it with a stick bait or a popper. Okay? Um, and you just keep driving around the walls until you see it. Or you keep casting and working away. But if you look ahead and you see a bit of a splash on there, zoom up there if you're electric or whatever and hit, hit it hard. That's the same at night. Yeah. Like if, if they're bumping up against the wall, you just cast it where you hear that sound. Exactly you right. See, yeah. Set, it, yeah, night time yeah. your vision's your ears. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> exactly right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, um, so yeah, so Stu's poppers. Uh, poppers are really good too. Um, years ago, I used to do a lot of little fish years ago. Um, skitter pops were the go. This is Rapala's new version of Skitter Pop because Skitter Pops are made by Rapala. Um, and the colours they got now are fantastic. And um, that's what we used to use on jacks years ago. And they still work hard. Yeah. Um, this is probably on, the, on all the different types of lures too. Yeah, yeah. So, um, any questions on the lures, hard bodies at all? No, all good? No one's asked about scent. Oh, yeah. Scent, look, well, does it make a difference, does it not? I think it does. I think it does. Uh, it uh, definitely yeah. helps. So, <laughs> but we, this year we did really hard, like we cast a lot of hard bodies at, at Flatties, right? Yeah. I talked to Flatties for a quick second, but it's the same scenario. And Centered uh, on the on the hard bodies versus no scent in the hard bodies was um, like crazy different. Yeah, stew our fish me all the time. Last year, well, last year <laughs> I didn't use any scent that kind of ended in the same result. But we don't go into that. <laughs> but look, I think fishing fishing's getting a lot more pressured, and you've got to try thinking what's gonna. Does it mask human smell? I don't know. Can they smell? Do they see it? What do they do? Who knows? No one's asked them. I've asked them and they don't answer, so. so. Mm. But um, look, which scent's better? Everyone's got their favourite. s is probably our biggest but seller. s is my favourite, but yeah. Stewie's... Oh, I really like Bait Pop now. Maybe that's why you have fish because it's, it's in that one. Yeah, well, yeah, you use it as well, <laughs> but anyway. Um, but look, it's really, really good. Um, the biggest thing is we don't talk about stuff that we don't use and we don't think mm. works. Mm. Um, there's a couple of different flavours or strengths in that, that Bait Pop. Um, I don't use it for sonar reflectiveness, so it's actually designed to fish with a live scope and it makes your lure look bigger on the live scope. So you can see it and you can track it. I just use it as a scent. But the easiest thing is, how often do you reapply S-Factor? You can't see it, it's clear, and you don't really know. All of the bait pot stuff has glitter in it. So A, it's going to disperse a little bit of glitter every now and then, and B, when it's got no glitter on it, dumb me can figure out I've got to put more scent on. So. It's kind of a bit of a no brainer. It lasts on there longer too. Yeah, on a hard body on. especially, yeah. It yeah. sticks really, really well. So mm. you don't have to use heaps. Like, it is a bit dearer. You're looking about 18 bucks for a tube that size. But I've used it for, well, since about a month before the Classic and I'm still on my first tube. So it's, it lasts really well. You don't have to put heaps on. Yeah. Mm. But yeah, it seems to work. But S Factor is really good as well. Um, but yeah. Either or either, just sense important. That's probably about equivalent to most guys one year fishing in time. Yeah, probably, yeah. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. yeah, so anyhow, sense yeah, important. Um, loop knots versus, no one's asked about loop knots versus snap swivels versus quick clips, whatever. Stu, what do you use, mate? Hard bodies is the exception. I'll tie a loop knot on one of them. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, it does <laughs> flatten it out. I keep an eye on it. I keep an yeah. eye on it. But look, yeah. at the end of the day, if I'm trolling or something like that and the lure's got a lot of action, you can use little clips and stuff. I don't really like them because you've got to go quite big to get the strength out of them when you use these heavier gear. Size two or size three yeah. in those quick clips. So it's getting quite big, it's getting quite bulky. <laughs> a, it snags a bit of weed, but it's going to impair that lure as well. The lure's not designed to swim with that weight sitting on the front. Um, I just, because I'm fishing that bit heavier leader, I'll loop knot onto the front of the lure. Yeah. Keep an eye on it because it does flatten out. Yeah, yeah. 100%. Why, 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 why it's just the action. Like when I, I'm quite pretty aggressive with it, so I'll jerk it heaps. Yeah. And um, if it's tied straight on, it kind of binds right. on it. Yeah. 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 Whereas if you've yeah, got that loop knot, it's more free. Yeah. Right. So yeah. That when, yeah. When you do tie mm. one, like if it's tied on at the top of the loop or the bottom of the loop, two different actions. Exactly. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, with the hard bodies, if you're tuning yep. them to swim lefty righty, do you matter if it's a splitty or a loop knot? Uh, uh, no, nah, not really. No, no, no. 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 So it's still so going to swim better with a loop knot. Yeah, yeah. 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 
So that's the other thing. Like you can actually tune your lure to swim a certain way. So if you're going to fish pontoons, it's going to be bad because you're going to get to a point where it doesn't swim the way you want. But you might have like keen jack guys. And when I'd done heaps of it, I had two trays of lures. I had a tray of left, left swimmers and right swimmers. And you'd throw it along a pontoon and get it to swim under the pontoon. Yeah. Just means that every time you got to buy a lure, you buy two of them. Yeah. But yeah, so it's the slightest of bends, but it just makes it track just under the pontoon. And mm. it's where no lure's been before type of thing. So yeah. Yeah. So to tune, does everyone know that when you yeah. tune a lure, if, I'm, if it's going to the left, you want to pull it back to the right, you actually tune it to the left more. Does that make sense? So if your lure's pulling to the left and you want it to go back this way, you actually bend it to the left a bit more to make it come back this way. Opposite to what you think. Mm. think it's got to go to the right and then tune it to the right, but that's not the way. Sometimes, sometimes yeah, you can, yeah. Two. Some lures you nail it straight away, yeah. other lures you make it ten times worse. Yeah, you throw that one in the box and get a new one in. Yeah, so. no, yeah. We talk about the lures spiralling or, or going off to the wrong wrong side, but Stu likes them to go off to the wrong side. Well, sometimes, yeah. Yeah, sometimes, yeah. yeah. So yeah. I'm not that pop up now, yeah, yeah, so that's two things. So, that yeah, yeah, so exactly. with, with jacks, you have to troll the current because they're quite deep divers. Mm. You troll against it, they'll just pop out. Mm. Because most of the lures are already designed for maybe three or four knots max. And if you're going against the current, you've got like, as I said, two or three knots of current, plus you're doing two knots, whatever. You're doing five, it's just going to keep blowing out. Right. You go with the current, it starts to swim, does the right thing. Yeah. And the fish are facing you now. Yep, yeah, it works yes. better. Mm. Yep. But you're going faster, believe it or not. Yeah. You might be doing four or five knots, but you're only doing two. Yeah. Okay. Um, any questions on, on any of the hard body lures at all, folks? Before we go to soft plastic. Soft plastic is even more in depth. <laughs> okay. Stewie. Soft plastics. <laughs> soft plastics. Where do we start? Um, okay. If you had to nail down two quick things on soft plastics and finish the seminar in like one minute, my choice, I'll get Sue's choice in a minute. White, three or four inch Z-Man, um, half ounce or three eighth at the lightest, four O hook. Okay, that's me. Stuart? It's about the only time I'm ever going to agree with you. <laughs> <laughs> but look, it's one of those things, any yeah. small paddle tail, again, this time of year, they are a bit doughier than they are when it's really hot. Start like with three inch stuff. You see guys throwing five inch stuff all the time. They're just not real fired up yet. Yeah. So you start with that smaller size. That's the champion. Again, Thank you, red's really good. Uh, white, as Dougie said, but like just a three-inch minnow. Yep. Yeah. So standard flatty gear. Um, they work really well, but the difference is going to be the size head that you use. So not a lot of pauses. Fantastic. More casting, more winding. So you're going to be Jeez, fishing that you. structure. It's just burning. Um, so throw it out as soon as it hits the water because I'm using a half ounce. My reel's in gear and I'm winding. And it's just pretty steady. I don't jerk it, I don't flick it, I don't do anything. Just a steady wine. And that heavier head, as I said before, it allows it to plane down to that depth and keep pretty stable depth in the water column. So, um, A, you can fish it faster, cover more ground. Jacks are one of those things. They're absolutely everywhere. And they're easy to catch at times, but you do a lot of casts in between. It's just one of those things. But, um, yeah, so Dougie's drawing a pontoon by yeah. the look of it. Yeah. So if, if, I, if that's the pontoon there, right? And the current's going this way. Um, I'll position the boat on this side, not that side, because I'll be casting up into the current otherwise. So here, I'm sitting about, probably about this length, or maybe a little bit further out from the um, pontoon down that way. There may be another pontoon just here too. Um, and I'll try and get my cast to be right about that, that, that area there, if that makes sense. Okay, and then I'll let the lure sink down. And you need to know, most pontoons only, they might be that high of the water, they don't sit much more than that under the water, if that makes sense. So they're probably about 600 or 700 mil right deep, I guess. That, yeah. So you want to, to go down about at least a metre. And the objective is to keep that lure at that depth you know, the whole time back. And if you're burning it fairly fast, a light jig head doesn't work. That's why you use half ounce. Oh, I like to use half ounce. Sorry, just quickly. When you're mm. doing that with bait as well, do you... If I'm casting baits? Do you no. Just no, I just throw it out and no. let them smack it. Yeah. Yeah, live bait or whatever. Um, but if, if, if you're fishing pontoons with live baits, um, that is one time you don't use 
how the engines sync up. Is so the natural. Uh, one half ounce, half, half ounce, ounce, yeah, half ounce. So ounce. jig heads, so I'll pass this It's around. a pretty steady wire. That's a, that's a yeah. standard type yeah. jack jig head. Yeah. yeah. So strong and hook as well. You're using heavy gear. You can't go using that fine wire hook with really good penetration because you're going fast. You need something that you can just like feel the bite, set the hook, rip them out. <clears throat> yeah. As I said, they've, they've swum out from under here. They've seen your lure, eyeboard, have swum back around, eaten it there. They're under there in two seconds. They're yeah. done. They know where they're going. They're yeah, they're going there or there. Yeah. yeah. The golden rule, guys, is never put your boat right here. Oh, sorry, like like that sort of thing, and cast up along the edge, because he's going to get you every time on that pole. You need to bring, bring yourself out a bit from the jetty, and your first that area there, your line, your lure's going to be pretty close to the jetty, but then you're trying to pull him out away from the jetty a bit, because that's your that's your uh, safeguard, so yeah. <laughs> like that's yeah. the only safety you got. And generally, as Stu said, they may hit it up here. I rarely get hit in this area here, but I get hit a lot in this area here. Yeah, they follow and, it out mm, for a fair way. Mm. Yeah. How many cars do you give it? Probably about four, maybe. Three or four. I do, if, yeah. if six, I don't know, you used to. No, I do three. So my first cast yeah, three will be or four. from yeah. there to there. Yeah. That's your first. Second one's on this base as you're going that way. Like I'll leave my electric on three, so I'm fishing fast. Because at the end of the day, you're never gonna fish every pontoon in a canal system. There's too many of them. So you wanna do as many as you can. Don't try to make the smart fish bite, find some dumb ones, so cast more. <laughs> but um, so throw this one, you cover that, um, that pile on in that corner of the pontoon. If they're here and see it out here, they're still gonna come out and hit it. Like they've got pretty good eyesight. They're a big eye for a small fish. Um, so I've thrown in there, then the next cast I'll throw is along that face there and then I'll generally throw one a bit of a death cast but when I'm about here I'll throw over the corner of the pontoon, let it land there. I'm still travelling remember so by the time it's landed I'm probably about on par with it and I'll just crank it by the side of the pontoon and that's it. Yeah. It is really easy if you've got a foot pedal. Mm. I've just got a hand remote, it's a bit of a pain. It's not so quick. You hook them and you've got to kind of stumble on whatever. Whoever invented the hand control on electric outboards when you had really had foot control is not a fisherman. No. Trust me. No. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Very hard. No, especially yeah. jack fishing and stuff like that. It's, it's right such a pain. Spot locked and stuff. Oh, yeah. yeah. Can, yeah. yeah. I know. Fish, but yeah. If you, a lot of you may not have had the luxury of using a foot pedal because hand control's been a while now. But if you haven't got one, try and get one for your motor because you don't even know that you're doing it's like driving a car your feet's doing the work but you're actually concentrating you do whatever you want and you, you can you pull yourself wherever you want to go you know? yeah it's a bit of an art to learning it but you get good at it yeah um the other time you may do it a, a cast up the inside but it's suicidal because that's where the poles are normally so you get a lot of jacks lost in that area they're there don't get me wrong particularly if someone's got a floating pontoon on the inside of their pond of their jetty is really good yeah they love those brick pontoons, like the bricky type ones that you drive boats on and stuff like that. Don't know what's different, they but they love it. Yeah. Mm. Grey, they like the grey plastic yeah. pontoons. Yeah. But yeah, so if you're going to be casting up around this area and behind the pontoon a lot more, that's where that surface stuff comes into play. It's a lot shallower water up there. You don't have to work it as fast. Like if you throw half ounce head up there, there's a bit few rocks and stuff like that flowing into the pond, um, into the water, mm. like a revetment wall. It's just snag city. You're forever going in and cutting in between pontoons and stuff like that. And that's when you get people yelling at you and screaming at you and all that stuff. So mm. yeah. you want to minimise that. Mm. Yeah. My, my three, um, I have three outfits set up with on Jack Fisher generally. One's got a, obviously a soft plastic. Um, I might have a hard body like a, a diver most times. And definitely I have a prawn, a pr I would be a splash prawn or a, or a soft rubber prawn or some type of prawn um, with a very light jig head. I use like about a 1640 or 1840. So very natural and just twist, twist, very complete opposite to what you're doing, burning it. Um, but they love it too at times, okay? Particularly every March. Yeah, 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 a little bit later on. Like as well, that's when we kind of get our prawn run as well. So there's mm. a lot more prawns in the system. We have prawns down here as well. Not a lot of people chase them. There's not heaps, but they're still down here. So, yeah. I think the biggest thing is if you're going to use a prawn plastic style, like 
these, I've caught a lot of jacks on these over the years, just like a pre-rig Samaki or a Zeric live shrimp and stuff like that. Um, that's probably the best two colors I've found as well. But um, I just actually, that's the only time that I'll fish them with that standard weedless setup in. A, they skip not too bad if you want to get them in around um, jetties and things like that. And B, the weight's in the right spot. So it A, sinks flatways, horizontal. And um, B, you can just slowly wind it. If you look at a prawn when it's naturally swimming, they're not flicking. They're it's not a little like, legs to pull yeah, that's there. right. They're yeah. just going like that and they're just doggy paddling along type of thing. But when you look at everyone with a plastic, like especially flathead fish, I'm a bit of an example, but they're ripping it real fast and fishing it really fast. Prawns don't go fast forwards. They only go fast backwards. So, and you pull all these prawns from the front. So yeah, just crawl it along. And yeah, jacks love slow, slow fish prawns at times. Little yeah. MMDs, they're good. Little MMDs, like the soft ones. Yeah, yeah. I yeah, haven't caught heaps on them, but um, like room do, fishermen always catch them. a bigger them. version yeah. of it, maybe. Yeah, but they don't they have do. that action, though, is there? They just yeah. Yeah, they don't do much. Yeah. Um, I'll just show you a few good plastics that work really well. So uh, Z-mount, the same for the white ones. We sell in all colours for jacks, but the white and the, like the calico, the red one's very popular for jacks. Um, and we sell a lot of swim tees as well in the, um, the hollow belly type style. In that red colour's really good, the white's good as well. Um, Houdini's really good, Lantern's really good. Uh, there's a lot of good colours in it. Um, in the biggest baits I'd probably use it would be something in this category here, which is a fairly big, that's a different one, so Bite Science. These things are really good too, guys, by the way. Mm -hmm. um, they're really good. Maybe in something like that, I'll pass that around. And that'd be sort of later in the year with bigger. Generally, yeah. 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 yeah, like around Christmas onwards. Yeah. Yeah. Cheers, mate. Yeah, for like um, a pre-rigged plastic, I don't like pre-rigged plastics generally. They come with pretty poor quality hooks, but that bite sign stuff's actually really good. The BKK. They're sharp hooks there, BKK hook, mm. yeah. So they're tough as and they're sharp. And that's about as small as I'd use. Yeah. yeah. So um, does anyone use a bait junkies at all? Yeah. Yeah, they do a fair, they're stretchy like Z-Man, same sort of material. Um, they do a couple of good colours for jacks, which I reckon be good. They obviously do white ones as well. But these two colours, particularly this dark red one, I reckon is going to be a goal. I'll pass those around. So you're saying, Stuart, like Nav, three inch? Three inch, yeah. yeah three, four. They're stretch. four inch, so. Yeah. 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 But like this one, that one yeah. there. Those, that, those ones you got, really guys, good. are really good. So yeah. I don't know, does anyone follow Rue, the Japanese dude that gets lots of jacks? Yeah. Anyone follow him? If you don't, you should. On Facebook, he's really good. Um, he's always tasting spot tail bass at the moment. but overseas but um, this these fellows here and those fellows there um, which are the doctor which is a really good lure um, and that, those ones there um, they're his favorite for skip casting so he rigs them up with a uh, either weedless or very very small jig head but quite big hook and skips them in and they'll skip better than anything you've ever seen so you guys have got a pack of those in your bag Give them a shot for skip casting, okay? Really, really good. I think yeah. it's because they're roll of a round profile, but I'll pass that around. Yeah, a bit of a different really tail good. on it as well, but yeah. it does have quite a good tail beat to it. Those yeah. lures are um, the bigger version. That, that's the one that Shane Campaign, who's Australia's number one barra fisherman, um, that's all he uses. Is those okay. the next size up on that? Yeah, for barra, it wins all the comps. The other ones oh. are those um, storm hit shads. Yeah, they work really good. Um, really good pattern, like that color. I'll pass it around, but it's a dead ringer for a herring. Mm -hmm. Like it just works really well. They are a little bit softer. You don't get too many fish out of one, but um, they swim really good. And being that bit deeper profile, they have a really good roll. Mm -hmm. They roll really, really well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. You ever troll some places? No, I don't. No, mm -hmm. not really. You can do, but yeah, I just think trolling hard. Lots easier. of flatties on troll, but not, not yeah. my kids used to just leave it back in the boat when we always catch yeah. flatties. But when we troll, when we move from one spot to the next, but um, for jacks, I never have caught no. trolling. Um, Casts are a really good one as well. Similar profile to what Stu just showed you them before. I do have really good colours as well. I'll pass those couple around. So, um, so the cast stuff's a little bit different. Give it a shake. There's actually rattles tail. in there. Yeah, massive so, tail. Bit of a so, different noise. They're like a, a series of four, sometimes you've got to wake them up and um, those things will wake them up because they've got a massive tail, a lot of vibration in the water. 
Um, you showed it nice anyway. Yeah, you did. Yeah, cool. Um, again, trying to find glues that are red. There's not many available that are red, by the way. A red or that sort of red gold colour. Um, that's the Jackson Japanese soft plastic, really good as well. Um, McCarthy's are a great jack lure as well, particularly in the four inch paddle tail. The problem is they break really easy, but they're really good lures, you know, they work really well. Um, oh, has anyone ever tried for jacks a non tailed type plastic, like just a point tail, like a, yeah, like like a jerk bait style? So? No. Nah. Nah, so and I actually haven't tried them yet either myself. Nah. But since I've been using, I've been using these a lot, guys. When I see them, I was pushing the crap out of these. I'm hanging the trolleys on jacks because I reckon they'll just smack it. Crazy legs. Crazy legs, same sort of style, mate. Yeah, that's they correct. Go well in the sort of Do they really? No, yeah. yeah. So just just dancing yeah, it around. Yeah. Yeah. Really yeah, they dance around. Yeah. Yep. So these have been really good on other species, and um, I, I have no doubt they'll work really well on the jacks. Didn't have them last season, so I don't know. Um, this is a, the other one I was telling you about before. They're also the stretchy type material. So are those, actually. So the one, the S tackle one coming around is the, the first one that I've seen that's a pad printed um, 3D type look on a stretchy type material. So previously when you had on stretchy type materials, people have tried it, it just falls off once you do the first stretch. It just, it just all, the whole print falls off. Yeah. These guys are pretty tough okay. and um, takes a long time to wear out. Um, yeah, they also do that, that one there, which is really popular as well, uh, in different colours, pinks, whatever. Um, and they'll do a prawn, which again, I haven't tried it, but I reckon it's going to be the go. These things, that colour there for jacks has just got to do it, I reckon. It's got to catch jacks. <laughs> Again, I weren't here last season, so I can't tell you how good they are yet. I haven't had a chance to try them out yet. But that's part of the S tackle range. I know they work on flatties. <laughs> they work really well. Um, oh, and power baits do one as well. Um, this is a really good. Does anyone use the power baits in the shrimp yet at all? You try those, buddy. They work really well, real well. And um, these have been out for about two years now, and they are. Just an absolute great lure as well. I'll pass this around. These have got a fair bit of weight, so they cast really well. So when you're using the prawn, sometimes you don't use them as much weight at all. You just use a very light jig head and dance around like a prawn, sort of flicking around, you know. Pass that around with the packet. Thanks, Stu. Any questions on the prawns? Oh, that's your big one, Stu. You like that one too, mate? Yeah, so yeah, just slow rolling again. Those ones work all right. Mm. Uh, so look, it's more of a northern yeah. thing, hey? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, like in around mangroves mm. and stuff like that. You can use it down here, mm. but um, yeah, I'd generally fish more of this stuff. Yeah. So yeah. all these, these here are the same technique? What are you saying? Just, just no. 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 So the prawns are more just like twitch, twitch, twitch and finesse, very small jig head yep. around the pylons or on the edge, very close to that edge of that pontoon. And, um, and hope you can get him out. Yeah. 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 Like you, you all know, uh, who, who hasn't hooked a big jacket at all? Is anyone here not hooked one yet? Okay. Hopefully you do this after this one tonight. Um, but when you hook a big jack, it can be over in like seconds. It's like wahoo, same deal, like dunk, and the line's snapped and it's all bitten off, whatever. But these guys don't bite you off. The, oh, they do, but they, they tend to more just take into their cover and cut you off, you know. Um, but it is so quick and it's such an adrenaline rush because yeah. you can't control it. It's just, yeah, it, you hope to God you can turn it out. And sometimes you've got to move the rod around different way and try and turn him. If you let him take you, you got, most times you get no chance. You need to actually switch the direction of your rod and try and turn him. And so that's what I, my suggestion would be. If he's just going straight for something, then try to turn the rod the other way. Because you've got nothing else to lose, except the lure. So <laughs> it's going to happen anyhow. <laughs> yeah. Um, like, they I haven't tried on jacks yet. We haven't tried on yeah. jacks yet. But the Crush City, as you all know, um, the imposter, which is that yabby looking thing. Like, I just know it's got to work on jacks too. But we have, again, haven't tried it. It wasn't out last season. So 
there's a lot of new stuff. But the best thing about um, any type of new lure is, and that's why we excel on the flat, is they just haven't seen it before. Different action, different look. Sorry. Um, whatever. And it just seems to create a bit of a hype for the fish mm. or the fishery. Um, there, Stewie, these fellas here, mate. Yeah, so vibes work really good winding. as well. Slow winding, or you can just vertically fish them. So mm. quite a lot of the, um, people, if you're fishing like Main River, say the Cooma or the Narang, you've got a deep rock, um, like a rock drop off, so a rock revetment wall slides under the pontoons. There's still rocks under the pontoon itself. You can just drift along the front face of them and just vibe. So not much casting, more vertically fishing. And um, it works really good. That size and the size smaller, which is 85 mil. Um, yeah. Does everyone know where that spot is? Does everyone know, want to know where that spot up, is? Yeah. Sorry, stupid. No, you're <laughs> up at Narang? Up towards that way? No. It's a very good spot. It looks like my wife got a monster jack there one day. Um, and you can troll and cast it. It's yeah, where, the, where the mansion is? Near where the, um, where the power lines are. Before the railway bridge. Up the Narang. Up the Narang, yeah. So you're just before the railway bridge at the, on the Western Highway. So, oh, yeah. does that make sense? So between Carrara oh. Sports Stadium and and um, and the railway bridge, and just for the railway bridge on the bend there, the rock wall goes from the hill all the way down. Is that what you're talking about? No, I don't even know where that one is. Okay, but that's, anyway, that's, that's, used that's, where, yeah. anyway, that's where my spot is. Yeah. <laughs> so the rock wall goes all the way down underneath the jetties, and it's it's a fairly high, big. Uh, hill um, and it's facing on it's on the north side of the river and there's a couple of pontoons off it and there's really control of pontoons cast of pontoons yeah. yep really really good yep, just, yep. Hmm. It's just near the power lines you'll see the power lines go across the river there okay. so it's pretty much at my, my backyard right there is it are you there mate yeah. have you tried for jacks here yet yeah it's pretty and, much the same place as I go and, oh, sorry about giving you a spot away and <laughs> have, you, <laughs> have you had any luck there at all uh, no, I haven't tried this season. But moment. previously? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, You see a few boats fishing out, I think. Yeah, so I think around now and all that, the river sort of churns it out and just drops right Yeah, that's correct, mate. Yeah. It's a good hole there, yeah. 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 So, and the yeah. last yeah. ones we got, we noticed it dropped maybe four or five metres. Oh, I got deeper, yeah, did it? Just really... Scathed it out? Yeah, really oh, fantastic. That'd be even better then. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. yeah. That's a good error. <laughs> Sorry, buddy. <laughs> yeah, be busy at the back there now. <laughs> um, okay, so any other questions on the... Oh, I've got Stu's coral trout colour here. It's got to work. It's, yeah. it's orange, so it was a good start. Um, but give that a crack, maybe. Um, you can use um, slow, like the top, top, top barra type lures, like the Berkeley Shimmers and stuff like that. Um, these guys, you can cast it like a, like a normal uh, salt plastic with a half ounce jig head. Their weight is similar, actually. I think it's around, um, oh, they're three eighths, 10 gram, but, and then just work it along that depth, okay? So as we said, the golden rule is, sorry, about, is to keep the depth pretty well the same all the way along. You just gotta keep that momentum up that it doesn't go down any lower, it doesn't go up any higher. Just get that right speed, and that is the speed, okay? You might slide down a little bit to get close to the boat to keep, the, keep it down deeper. And that's when you get the hit normally. And as soon as you slow it down, whack. Okay. Um, you want to add to that, Stu? No, I think that's about it. Huh? Yeah, I think the biggest thing is when you're doing a lot of this casting stuff, don't run too long a leader. Don't wind the leader onto your reel. It's just mm. too long. It's going to A, restrict your casting. B, your casting's not going to be real accurate because you've got a leader knot on your reel. It can grab and stuff like that. It's not a smooth transaction. I just use a metre and a half of leader or an arm's width type of thing. Um, but yeah. Pass those to So when you're doing your three casts, what makes you make your decision whether you'll do a hard body or a soft plastic? Oh, normally it's right. whatever I'm holding, Greg, I'm a bit lazy like that. But I, look, if it's early morning, I'll probably start off with the surface lure and I'd still cast the surface lure around along here. Like you'll get Trevally valley and stuff and the jack would come out. They're active. They do leave their pontoons when it's dark. They go out, they're patrolling, they're looking around, they're active. but so I'd always want to fish like that backwater a bit more, or I might have the two rods and I'll go one in there with that surface lure before I get to here. I've thrown one along here with the um, with a plastic or a hard body, worked it nice and more well, medium speed, and then once I get to here, I'm gen generally just going to do it with a hard body or a plastic again. But the biggest thing is it depends on how you fish it. Like if you stop here and you kind of put the boat there and you think, right, I've got ten minutes, say, to do. 
a cast in there, a cast along the front, and a cast here. You can swap rods four times if you want. Go to cast and think, oh no, I don't want to cast that lure, pick up another rod and do it. Whereas if you're fishing quick, I just fish with whatever rod I'm holding. So generally it's just that plastic, something that I can fish fast, and I'll just fire in my three and keep going. Yeah. yeah like that takes a lot longer to work. So it just depends on how much time you want to invest in that area. Yeah. Another thing too, if you're going to use the prawns or the uh, surface lures, work your rod tip up higher. And when you're going to do the burning, just keeping it the soft plastic, keep your rod tip down low. And, and when you hook the fish, if it hits and you're down low, pull it to the side and try and pull him out. Yeah. Left or right, whichever way you're facing on the jetty, on the tide. Um, that, that all makes sense? Okay, any questions on soft plastics at all? That one's good. Okay, I'm just going to run through some tools. I'm going to take a few more spots and then we're done then. But on the tools, um, they have big teeth. And jacks have a habit of going chomp, chomp. It's like a, a pulse. And if your hand's in the way, it's going to get done. They've got canine teeth. Um, if you do happen to keep a big jack that's, say, 65 plus, definitely keep the jaws out. Of, cut the jaws out and put it on the anthill or whatever. And, and they make beautiful jewels, but they're fantastic. It's like this other stuff you get from the chemist, actually. Is there? It's a hydroxide. Hydroxide, yeah. And cleans it up? Yeah. Yeah, right, okay. Never tried it, yeah. Okay, yeah, good. Okay, that's a good, good call. Yeah. But definitely, um, if you're going to nail one and it's a good size, um, or it's dive, or whatever, um, yeah. cut the jaws out. Um, but otherwise, let it go. Um, so you need some sort of liquid, whether it be just a, a cheaper pair like that or, or a better set or whatever you've got. You need lip grips. Um, next thing is, next thing is make sure, as Stewie said, your hooks, if you do need to replace your hooks, make sure that they're the right ones and uh, not crappy ones. Um, we sell a lot of um, Shintos, which are BKK style. Well, they are BKK hooks, but the same style shape. Um, and they come in like a medium and a, and a very heavy gauge. And um, these ones from uh, Decoy, we sell a lot of these, uh, the wide gate type. So I'll pass those two around. They're only a small hook, but they're very strong. Um, okay, we'll probably change our split ring hooks on split rings and done our thumbnails with a piece of wire up underneath your thumbnail. Get yourself a little pair of split ring pliers, guys. Quick, easy, and whatever. And uh, it makes life much easier. Um, and you just need some sort of good plier. Again, you don't want to get those um, teeth in the way. Mm. Yeah, so that or a hook out gun, which I think you guys have got in your bag today, uh, are fine to get the hooks out. Yep. You can get down the throat and get them out without doing too much damage to the fish. The hardest part is when Jack's got that back hook down his throat and his teeth are doing this. And uh, you don't know how to approach it without killing him, you've got to let it go, you know. It's quite awkward, so that'll help you out. Um, and that's probably about all I think you need in tools, net. So you need a decent net. Um, I'm, a, I'm a big fan of rubber nets, as in this stole here. Sorry. This is only a small one, but in that style, right? But obviously you've got a deeper one. Um, the big one up downstairs is the one we sell most of. This is not really a jack net, unless it's a small one, Stewie. Don't say it's anything, right? Do framing. Um, but you want a deep one. And um, rubber nets are the easiest because they come out easy. They don't wreck the fish up. And they definitely um, don't get the hooks caught up too bad. Yeah. Um, if you use a traditional other style net, they're not too bad as well. But if you just use like your, your cotton type ones, they're just very painful to get the hooks out. And as you all know, time is the essence. If they're on the bite and they're on the chop it around the joint, you don't want to spend 10 minutes getting the hook out of the net. Um, I think that's about all you need to know on tools. Okay, so spots. So how many guys here from, uh, say, north of um, Jake as well? A few of you are? Okay, so look, Jake, the Logan River has a fairly good range of spots as well, but you really are, it's just, nothing beats the Gold Coast. You're better off coming down here. <laughs> Sorry to say for the guys that live in the Gold Coast, sorry, more people coming, but but it is much better. Um, look, Humberstone Passage, the way you might get a few if you're up that far. Um, Caboolture River, I think they get a few in the Caboolture River as well. But again, nothing like the Gold Coast. 
you've got to come to Gold Coast. It's as simple as that. Um, jumping pin. Uh, Jake as well, there you get a few. You get a few around Clipso Bay, but you can't fish in there, it's a problem. But there's plenty in there. Um, the Pimpama River, we used to catch them years ago, Diamond Head there, but it's not as good as it used to be. It's sort of shallowed right up now. It's nearly hard to get across in front of the Diamond Head now. Um, so the Pimpama, not really the best. Coomera's good. So Coomera, um, anywhere from right up the back blocks as far as the lake all the way down to the rock bar near the boat ramp, uh, near the highway bridge. The highway bridge is good. Um, all the way down to the first lot of canals and then down to uh, Coomera, North, North Coomera Shores, what it's called. Yeah, that's a good area as well. Plenty of jacks there. Um, around Century Cove, really good jack spot. So we really used to pound that pretty badly and now the security is really good there. It's not, <laughs> as, it's not as good as it used to be. <laughs> yeah, has, has anyone worked there in security? No, <laughs> okay. <laughs> But um, yeah, no, it's, it is a really good spot and um, down towards uh, the entrance into um, Hope Island, Hope Harbour that's called. Yeah. Yeah, so the little island before Hope Harbour, there's a, um, on the edge of the shoreline there, the rock wall there, um, a great spot. But the security guy is pretty well. If you can, the best thing to do if you go up the river and see where he is and then burn back down, because you can do more than six knots now, right? So you have. 20 minutes up to see, but he can only do like three knots or five knots in that electric boat. <laughs> Sorry, mate. <laughs> so, <laughs> you burn out, find out where he is, and then zip down and go. <laughs> Not that I do it, but, <laughs> no, but my, my son makes me do it. <laughs> anyhow, um, so that's the trick where you get your mate to go in his boat and you swap around. Um, have they got two of those boats or one? Because it could be trouble. Yeah, two. Yeah. Oh, have they? Ah, oh, there you go. Okay. I'll try and find where the boat are. <laughs> and there's plenty of place to, at, um, around uh, that, that area to, to fish. Um, and then um, one of my like, spots years ago, we used to smash them, especially troll the, the man's baits, similar to the one you got in the bag. Um, as you come out of the boat harbour at Paradise Point and do a right, I get on the left too, but both ways are good. You do a right and you go up to um, along that rock wall until it hits the jetty and just you troll or cast that rock all the way along there. Run out tide's the best, late in the afternoon, low tide, da, da, da. Um, Or you go burn up to um, Jabiru Island, uh, where, the, where the canal goes in the left and goes to a dead, dead stop where the bridge is there, comes to the rock wall. So on that corner, it used to be Just Magic used to live there. Um, that is like the big jack, uh, do lots of tackles spot. So you should try there. But um, <laughs> it's very hard to get a fish out of there. The monsters in it. Like, I mean, as soon as that's the Big biggest, yeah. one of the biggest jack spots I think I've ever fished. So on that corner, and you troll the run out, tide the last run out, all the way back down to the boat harbour, across the front of those canals. When you're trolling, if you're trolling lures, you want to have your rod tip nearly hitting the, the jetty to go past, okay? And have it drag locked up tight, and have your hand on, it's hard if you troll them with the current on the run out because you're on the same side as your throttle generally with the rod. Unless you can go with that, go fast and pull yourself out of the, pull him out of the, out of the uh, structure, otherwise he's gonna get you. So that's another trick when you're trolling is, um, is be quick on the accelerator. Or you've got a tiller to go, because you've got that on that hand, this is in that hand, you work with your rod, and as soon as you hook up, you just drag him out into the channel and then playing, okay? Um, then uh, from there, uh, as I said, Sovereign Island, great spot, high tide spot though for casting. Early morning's the best, more than afternoon. Um, very early, like 4 o'clock, 4.30, 5 o'clock in the morning. Uh, Curran Co is really good too. Um, the rock walls of Curran Co, the retaining wall. Um, then as you come up our way, um, definitely Bayview Harbour is a good spot. Um, but the canals at Ronald Bay is probably one of the best spots on the Gold Coast, I dare say. Um, there's so many big jacks up around the, all the houses there. There's so many pontoons and floating pontoons. And as Stu said, you couldn't mm. work every pontoon in one day except Rano Bay, you know. You'd have to take from six to six, maybe you'd do it. I don't know. Um, and then if you head up, um, uh, Bigger is not too bad, but it gets a bit shallow in Bigger Creek, but they're in there, don't get me wrong. They're there, they're right at the back of um, near Harbour Town as well, Harbour Keys, what it's called. That's not too bad area as well. It's quite deep in there. It's quite good. Uh, definitely um, uh, from there, you've got the Seaway Wall and then you head up the Narang River. Um, 
the corner where the boys' school is at TSS, there, and the little creek comes in. At night time, that little creek on the run out tide is a great spot to get a back eddy there as well, because it comes down around the river where the big white house is, and you get a back eddy right in front of the um, that creek. And you get a lot of trevally there as, as bycatch, but uh, a lot of uh, big INGTs, um, and quite good size, but you get a lot of jacks there as well feeding, and that's quite good. Um, we cast a lot of divers around there at night time, actually, in that spot. Uh, then you go up the river. Um, look, uh, years ago, um, we said, it was suicidal, but we used to troll, I don't know if anyone's ever done it, the, all the pol polons underneath... Um, is it Condal? Is the one that's on... Yeah, west, uh, east side of um, Chevron Bridge. It's very difficult. <laughs> but it's a jack, it's like a jack um, retirement village in there, I think. They're all big. And, and you've got a pile on like there and there. And they're the same distance that way, all the way along. So you troll down the middle of them, and, um, but it's really hard to get one out. Is that yeah. Chevron Bridge? Yeah, near Chevron Bridge, yeah. Chevron right, I uh, see no. surface side, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 yeah there's a. Uh, we cast in there as well, but cast down along the pylons, but again, hard to get them out. The pontoon that floats on the northern side, that's not too bad. I've got a few there as well a few years ago now, though. Not real big ones there, though, but the big underneath the, the pylons are. Um, Chevron Island Bridge, like we hear a few fish caught there, but not many. Tiki Village, they get a few off the jetties there at night time if you're land-based. Uh, night time, though. Um, and then the council chambers, like I said before, on the, council, the hotter side, that corner, where the apartment, uh, where the building, office building is, opposite the big white house, really good corner there. Um, I haven't caught, I haven't really fished much up the canal there, so I can't really say how the canals are there. Um, and then you go around, and then you got Talabudger, a little Talabudger Creek. So little Talabudger Creek's a great spot. Like I said land based as well. Um, you got to go around to uh, where the, there's like a little uh, bridge, little footbridge goes across there. From there around, heading up towards the casino. Near Dracula uh, Yeah, I think it's near that, near that area there. Yeah, little Talabudja Creek. Um, that's a good area. Around the casino is a good area, guys. Even around the boat around there is not a bad area if you're land based. And the bridge there, it's not too bad. Um, and then, well, they changed the Pack Ferry around, but years ago we see a lot on the east side of Pack Ferry in the little shallow, uh, uh, not shallow, the deep, but little canal just around the inside of it. Um, these days are a lot wider and I know a lot of our customers where the footbridge goes across to the casino, a lot of guys get them in that area at night time, um, casting the rock walls there, uh, retaining wall. Um, and then, you know, you get them throughout all that broad beach system, but a lot of sand in that area, so it's not as good as, as runway bays or, or rock, right? Um, particularly, not so much shear water, but uh, shear water is good too, but more um, the, Shop the shopping centre yeah. one is the best. That's probably the number one on the Gold Coast, I think. Yeah. Um, and then you get as far as Rang River as, as well, mate, Lucy. Yeah. So that would be my go to, guys. If you're from down Talabudger and Crumbin Way, look, you've got to get the back blocks, but you won't get very big fish. But you'll get them in the lakes. Yep. Yeah. So um, Emerald Lake, in those lakes, um, have got big jacks in them, but the ones that like Emerald Lakes in particular, um, yeah, they're smart, and you've got to use bait there more than uh, more than lures there. For some reason, you get um, trevally and maybe giant herring that on lures, but you won't get many jacks. It's more bait. Ah, uh, yeah. So 90, I said 17th of all is 19th. Right, that's really good. Where the pipe is, so, but again, bait, bait more than lures. Yeah, yeah. Um, and tweed, and then tweed next. So you've got a lot of spots between Paradise Point. Or Coomera and and so um, even Sundial Bridge is like all throughout the canals. Over there. Yeah, give it a crack. Any questions for Stewie at all? Stewie loves answering questions. <laughs> no, everyone's right. When are we going to see you? I fish with Stewie, mate. Oh, no mate. time soon. Dougie will put his hand up first for that. No, one. no, I've got time. I've got time. <laughs> I fish with Stewie. I can't say I outfish Stewie. But I fish this <laughs> probably, probably reluctantly Sundays. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, Sundays I get to. Yeah. Occasionally. Um, anyhow. But guys, um, we haven't had much t chance to do jack fishing because we've just come off the flathead season. Um, but now we concentrate on jacks and obviously offshore when the when the weather's crap, we're up we're up the river. And when the weather's good, we're offshore at the moment. So that's our 
next two or three months. So you'll probably see us jack fishing if you're in the area. What's your boat look like, Stu? Probably won't see Stu. Not that one. Oh, he is. In a hurry, mate. That's yeah. right. Not enough hours in the day. You've got to yeah, do it. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah, he's, right. He's like yeah. a junior me when I was your age. <laughs> yeah. But anyhow, no, it's, um, it's great fishing for Jackson. Give it a go, guys. If you have any questions uh, throughout, let us know. Yeah. Okay. Well, um, we'll shut that down and we'll do the draw. Thanks, Stewie, mate. Thanks, mate. Thank you. Um, all good, mate? Not yet.